I've been getting some questions about how can I think about the span of a set of vectors? How can I visualize the span? So again, remember that if we have some vectors, let's say v1 up to vr, our vectors in Rn, then the span of this set of vectors v1 to vr is again a set of vectors and this is going to be the set of all linear combinations of v1 through vr so this is the set of all vectors that you can form as linear combinations so we can choose some real numbers a1 through AR, these are just real numbers. We can multiply AI by VI and then take the sum of everything. Okay, so that's the definition of a span. But of course, I agree that this is kind of hard to visualize. If we even just have one vector in 10 dimensions, say, that's kind of hard to visualize already, not talking about this linear combination of a bunch of vectors. But one place where we can visualize a span, and that might give you some feeling for what the span looks like in general, is in R2. So in R2, we can think about it just as the plane here. So now say that I have two vectors in R2. So I have some vector u and some vector v. And now let's think about the span of u and v. So the span of these two vectors, u and v, now we only have two of them, so this is just going to be the set of linear combinations uh, a1 times u plus a2 times v where again a1 and a2 are just real numbers. Okay, so let's see what we can, what, what vectors are in this span what vectors can we express as linear combinations of u and v? Well, the first thing that, I, that we can note is that we can always just take a1 to be 0, right? So then we would have 0 times u plus a2 times v. So this will give us all the vectors along the line defined by v, right? So we can achieve anything along this line here. So for example, this point maybe here, right, which is 2 times v, that's going to be in the span. This point here, which is maybe 3 times v, that's also going to be in the span because it's of this form. And we can do the same thing with u. Right, so the line defined by u, all the scalar multiples of u, those are also going to be in the span. So we might have this point, say here, that's 2 times u. We'll also have this point, that's minus u. Okay, so everything along this line will be in the span of u and v. All right, now let's look at some combinations of u and v. So something in the span certainly will be u plus v, right? So that's going to be this vector if we look at the sum of u and v. So if I just translate v to the head of u, that's going to look something like this, maybe this point here, 
that's going to be u plus v. So that's going to be in the span. Remember, I can also think about u plus v as I start at the head of v and I translate u over to the head of v. So that would be this dashed line here. All right, so we have the point u plus v. But actually, I claim that everything along these dashed lines is also going to be in the span, right? Because let's think about this point maybe here. That point is going to be u plus 1 half v, right? That looks about like u plus 1 half v. And if we want to get this point here, that is maybe u plus 3 quarters times v. Okay, so by looking at u plus, these are all points of the form u plus a2 times v, as a2 ranges between 0 and 1. That gives us this line here. Similarly, anything along this line is going to be in the span, right? That's just going to be vectors of the form uh, some number a1 times u plus v, where a1 ranges from 0 to 1. Okay, so all everything on these two lines here, line segments, is also going to be in the span. And see, now if I translate this line segment maybe to here, everything here will also be in the span. Because now instead of starting with u, I can maybe start with, say, 1 half times u plus something between 0 and 1 times v. That will give me everything along this line, right? So for example, this point here is maybe 1 half u plus 1 half v. And now you see that as maybe instead of 1 half, I just let this also be, say, 1 quarter, right? That would give me this line here. That line would be everything of the form 1 quarter times u plus a2 times v as, v as a2 ranges between 0 and 1. So just by um, multiplying u by different things here, maybe you can see that actually I can achieve anything inside this parallelogram. Okay, so everything inside this parallelogram is going to be in the span of u and v. And now if I can achieve anything inside this parallelogram, then if I take some point in here and I add v to it, you can see that that's just going to translate it into the neighboring parallelogram. So if I can achieve anything in this parallelogram, then I can also achieve anything in this parallelogram. Okay? And similarly, if I can achieve any point in here, then if I add minus u to some point in here, that is going to shift me into this parallelogram below. So then I can also achieve anything in this parallelogram below. So you can see that in this way, actually, the span of u and v is going to be all of R2. Okay? Actually, any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of u and v. Now, in R2, there's actually only one situation where the span is not going to be all of R2. And that's the following situation. So if we draw another set of axes here. So 
So my picture wasn't completely general in the sense that we could have another case and that's where this is U and now let me draw V maybe a different color that's where U and V actually lie on the same line okay so this means that V is just a multiple of U a scalar multiple of U so in this case the span of U and V is just going to be this line right so a point off of this line maybe a point over here I won't be able to write as a linear combination of u and v so in this case when v is a scalar multiple of u then the span of u and v is just going to be all the scalar multiples of u and v so just this line here Okay, so that's the case where, say, V is some scalar multiple of, oops, of U. Okay, so in this case, the span is just going to be a line, but in any other situation, the span of U and V is actually going to be all of R2.